Hi everyone, this is Ram from Informatica Global Customer Support Team. In this video, we'll see introduction to XML. In this series, I'm going to talk about web services, how to use in Power Center. So in order to learn web services, we need to have a basic understanding of XML. Now the agenda of this video is what is XML? What are the versions of XML? Why we need to use XML? Rules in writing XML file? How DGDs and XHDs came into picture? Now what is an XML? So XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. So some of the examples of markup languages are HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, and XML, JSP, Java Server Pages. Now recently they got converted to Jakarta Server Pages. Now these are the markup languages. Now XML is governed and owned by W3C organization. So W3C is nothing but World Wide Web Consortium. So this organization will give all the rules of uh, how to define XML and all. So we need to follow those rules. So what are the versions of XML? So 1.0 version came in the year 1998 and 1.1 version in the year 2004. And in 2006, we got a second edition of 1.1, but later they moved back to 1.0. So now the versions that are available are 1.0, 1.1, but most of the uh, user version is 1.0. Now why we need to use an XML? So generally we use it to tell that XML is used to share the data between two systems and it is used to represent the data and it is used to store the data. Now let us see with a real time example what is the different what how what is uh, uh, sharing the data between two systems. Now consider I have a machine for example this is a machine I have. So this is a machine and this machine this name is machine one or system one. So in this machine I have a water application and this is my water application and I have another machine which is a machine 2. So this is my machine 2. From this machine, I am going to access this water application. So how to access? So we, uh, if the water application is a web application, we can just make a request or like for example, they, we have a form which needs to be filled and needs to be sent to the water application. Now the fields that are present in this form is person ID, person name and age and uh, salary so next address and occupation so these are the fields that are present now if you want to send the data for example i am going to send the data like this one person name is ram and age is 19 salary is 1000 and address is andhra and occupation is employee now when i send the data like this now the target system it cannot uh, analyze this data it cannot able to understand this data so because it is just a plain text of character it cannot they we didn't define which field which data belongs to which field we didn't depend so that's why uh the uh play if you pass a plain text then the target system cannot able to identify so now csvs came into picture now when i give using comma separated values 19 000, andhra and emp so this is actually defining first field is person id and the second one is person name age like that so this is which is absolutely correct and the target system can able to predict the uh, like analyze this data based on the fields now the problem here is for example if i am passing like this 1019 andhra emp when i pass like this but actually 1000 is my salary but i am passing as a third field so it will the third field is age now the target system will treat this 1000 as my age so which is I incorrect and 19 as my salary which is incorrect so here the data is incorrect but still it will analyze the data here it is it will analyze the data now this is a drawback of csv and for example one more i am passing uh, age as correct and salary as correct and for example i am passing like this andhra pradesh comma emp so if you see now andhra will treat us andhra pradesh should be an address but Andhra will treat as address and Pradesh will treat as occupation because my actual data contains the comma, comma separated value. Now the target system, it will interpret Andhra as only my address and Pradesh as occupation, which is again incorrect. So why we got incorrect here? Because we are unable to define the endpoints in the CSV file. We cannot define endpoints. So that's why it is getting incorrect. Here, which why it is incorrect? Because it is unable because there is no semantics here so that's why xml came into picture now by using xml we can define like this now if you see person so is a tag root element and person id person name age salary address occupation 
So if you see here, one I am telling that one belongs to the person ID. That means I am able to define the semantics and Ram belongs to person name. Now after Ram, I am I don't have any data. That's why I am closing. That means I am able to define the endpoint, which is a boundary. Now when this data uh, goes to the target system, now the machine one or the water application can interpret this data correctly, and there won't be any syntactical or semantic errors, and it will store the data correctly. So that's why XML is used to uh, is used to share the data between the systems by representing the data. It is used to represent the person data by storing the uh, data as well. So you can see one RAM nineteen thousand are being stored. So this is an example and rules in writing an XML. So for every language, there will be rules. So we also need to follow some rules here. So it should start with the prolog. Prolog is nothing but a processing instruction. So prolog means the first line. So less than a question mark and a question mark greater than will be there. And in the middle, we'll write XML version equal 1.0. That means whatever the rules that are, uh, whatever the syntax that are going to write in this XML file are based on the version 1.0. That is what we are defining and encoding equal to UTF-8. That means whatever the characters that you are going to write in the XML that are based on uh, UTF-8 encoding and when the data receives to the target system, the target system needs to decode the data using UTF-8. That is the meaning of this. And the second point is it should always have only one root element. Now, why we need to have only one root element is now if you see here in the CSP, so the uh, we are actually thinking that person one belongs to person ID and Ram belongs to person name. That means there is no actual relationship, but we are thinking that there is a relationship. That but when coming to XML, XML we define XML in a hierarchy format. So when you define in a hierarchy format, so then we are able to actually define the relationship. For example, this is a person, and in this person we have a person ID, so person name, age, salary. That means one root element, only one root element is there, which is a person and remaining are all the child elements inside this. So these child elements can also contain another child element that is inner element it can contain. Then this child element will become parent element, but only one root element will be there. Next opening and closing tag should be defined. That means uh, if you are uh, defining person ID, then it should be closed person ID. Next need to maintain the hierarchy levels while opening or closing. That means if you open person ID and if I define one and then immediately if you define person name, a slash person name, and if you define that uh, and, and if you define that slash uh, person ID at the end, it is not valid. So you need to see the hierarchy and accordingly you need to define. Next one is how Dietrich and XSTs came into picture. Now let us see an example for this. Now consider I am a car manufacturer. So consider I am a car manufacturer. Okay. So and daily clients will come. Clients is nothing but, for example, owners, shop owners will come and they will take cars from me and they will sell to the customers. So now this is me, which is a car manufacturer. And these are the owners. So owner one and owner two and owner three. So these are the owners. Now, uh, this owner, owner one came on one day to me and he asked me that he need a uh, Range Rover car so that he can uh, sell to the customer. Now he came and he just told and he went. But I am unable to I didn't understand because he didn't tell what are the specifications or functionalities that uh, the car should have. So that's why I didn't send the, uh, send him the car. So the next day, owner called me and asked why I didn't send the car. Now I mentioned that you didn't send any uh, functionalities. So please send me the functionalities. Now owner one, what he is going to do right now is he is, he is sitting and he is going to write now the specifications so as xml is used to, to transfer the data so that's why he started writing an xml like this so product so he needs a product which is a product id one and so this is a product id and product name is a range rover and he has written like this and he has sent to me now, as a end, uh, as a car manufacturer, as this is, if you see in XML, there will be two words. One is uh, well formed, and the second one is validate. Now, if you see this is well formed, you can see that it is parsable data, and it is able, and I am able to read. So that's why it is well formed. I can able to understand. And this is valid or not? Let's see. 
now the owner to he he has sent the data like this order product name so he just define product name and he need swift car and he wrote like this product name and product quantity and he needs 19 and he wrote like this and he has given to me now as an end user like i am able to read this data which is well formed and the valid or not let's see now if you see the owner one is sending in one structure and owner two is sending in another structure to me now what uh, for example this is well formed you are able to understand for example owner were instead of range rover he has sent his wife name or he has sent his friend name here so and he has sent to me now i don't have that car so with the with uh, with the name whatever he has sent so that means it is not valid so whatever he has given it is not valid so what i so it, it is not valid for me now what i did is i told them that i will send you a sample xml file so you just define uh your xml like this and you send it back to me so that i can understand and i can send the products to you now owner 1 took this xml file to uh, sample xml file and he has written all the details and he has sent back to me and owner 2 has took this data and while writing owner 2 understood that so product code is 1 and product name is swift so that means owner 2 thought that i will uh, i will sell only swift cars and i cannot sell Uh, i will sell only swift cars i cannot sell bench cars or range rovers so that's what he thought and if he is if he is having a need of range rover he won't come and contact me now one or three while writing his own sample file he uh, he understood that i can deliver only to line 1 indira nagar i cannot deliver to hyderabad so one or three thought that and he didn't come to me so instead of the sample file instead of giving a valid information to the end user that means to my owner uh, it is giving a negative information so that's why instead of this sample xml file so xsts or dtds came into picture so dtds or xsts came into picture so this dtds or xsts are actually used in defining the structure of this xml so what i will do is i will define a dtd or xst and i will give to this owners whoever is whoever need and they will write their own xml file based on this dtd and they will send back to me and as a car manufacturer i will validate this xml file based on the dtd which is present near me and i will send the car back to them so that's where xsts or dtds came into picture now in the next video we'll see uh, how to write a dtd and how to write an xst now the references for you is you can check uh, xml guide xml files so this will give you a overall uh, uh, idea about uh, xml and you can also check uh, how to use up uh, xml in the power center using this link now if you love this video you can give your uh, feedback at support with this at the rate informatica.com or at our twitter channel thank you thank you for watching this video